Well, all right. Welcome to another episode of the Tiger Miley Report here at TigersMLReport.com. I am Rohil Castillo. And Simon is Chris Brown. No Brandon Davis evening appears. So everything is well, Brandon. We had some internet issues with him last week, and he was, I think he's working on a little bit. But all things aside, hopefully your your Monday night is going well. If you're watching the Tigers, then I'm, I'm sorry. Well, it, it, you know, at least they got some runners on base today. Uh, it, today was really more about uh, Reese Olsen just not having it, looking like uh, looking like Toledo Reese Olsen, honestly. Um, but you know, you got a you got RBI hit from Colt Keith. You got some traffic on the bases, at least. That's that's better than it's been. Uh, not to sugarcoat it, right? But but it's still a, a, another loss, probably. It's not over yet, but it sure looks like a loss. Yeah, it didn't it didn't, it didn't look good, and, and as far as what concerns me about the offense too is that i mean it, again we're, we're making fun of pittsburgh yesterday on the on the podcast a little bit i'm more see metric side of things because pittsburgh does this every it seems they've done this last couple seasons where they get off to a really good start and then they kind of fade out but they're still they play the tigers very tough and so speaking of things that are tough hopefully your wall didn't look too tough after all the gambling from the weekend for the march madness there was Women's game, South Carolina making history, and Bet Online is your place for the tournament bracket all all spring long. I was going to say March, but it doesn't apply to the copy here. And we still have a lot more in store for you. MLB is here, NBA, NHL playoffs around the corner, and as always, Bet Online is your number one source for all summer sports waging. Head to Bet Online today to stay updated to all the action. Remember, use the promo code promo code Believe. For your fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit, bet online. The game starts here. So yeah, that's uh essentially in a nutshell that it's. I mean, Bias struck out. Perez is off to. A, I mean, Winsill Perez did get the call up to Toledo today, or call up from Toledo today, and that was at first speculated heavily on what, who, what, when happened, and then it was just a simple Andy Baez tweaked the left hamstring. Yeah, and I, I don't know if that happened. I don't know if anybody looked back and saw when that happened, or if maybe it happened, you know, before. Or, or I, I suppose it would have happened yesterday, right? Not today, because they, you know, Winslow Perez announced it himself on his Instagram, uh, and, and you know, congrats to Tiger's Torquemoyle for trolling those Instagram pages and finding that. Um, but yeah, so I assume it was yesterday. But yeah, you know, the Tigers. You know that that got out for hours and hours before the Tigers actually announced the move. It wasn't until the after the locker room opened up in Pittsburgh, right, that they actually announced yeah. it. Um, but you know, it's it's good. It, uh, you know, it's well deserved. He's he's worked hard for years and years. He signed, originally signed in 2016, and uh, he's he's a solid offensive prospect in the system. And and it just so happened that you know Ryan Kreidler went on the injured list, and then Eddie's Lanard uh, got injured too on Sunday. And uh, Winslow Perez is one of the few remaining uh, offensive options on the 40-man. At least uh, to them, I think the best option, Akil Badu hasn't been playing very well. And Buddy Kennedy is, is okay. But Winslow Perez is, of, of the guys in the 40-man, he's off to the best start. Yeah, I mean, the batting average doesn't batting average doesn't appear that way. You look at it, the batting average, 213. But he has hit the ball well when he's made contact. And, I mean, if, if you're looking at Chicken, the chi- like that, that term about chicken shit to chicken salad. It's the, the Tigers okay. are doing the best that they can with that. And, and but there is, there's a lot to be said about per, like just Perez there. What happened with Riley Green? Apparently, Riley just killed the he, man. He doubled on a sharp fly ball to left fielder Jack Swinsky. I, I don't know. I, I didn't, uh, I'm not watching, but yeah. uh, he got yeah, an RBI yeah. there. So it's 7 4 now. Um, yeah, you know, that, that, that Perez. Like you said, I, he, he's hitting 212, 213 or whatever, but it was five extra base hits, including a huge uh, home run uh, this week. And uh, in huge by in terms of uh, when it happened, it put the Tigers, the Tigers were down to their last out, or the, the Mudheads were down to their last out. What happened? I you see, saw it? I, I, saw, I, I, I put the game up. I have it on mute because of the copyright uh, lords. Yeah. But yeah, he uh, crashed right into the wall on that. Oh, Sawinski did? Yeah. Did he stay down or did he get up? And he got up. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, it, it was it was good that Perez, no, and Richard, don't get me wrong, Perez did deserve it. It's not that I, we saw his swings down Toledo. He had the best swings. Down yeah, there. It, and yeah, there was there's some you know it's early in the season. There's an element of BABIP there, right? Like he, I think he had 
four walks and five strikeouts or something like that. It wasn't like he was striking out a ton. It was just when he was putting the ball in play, it was either going for extra bases or getting caught. So, uh, no, he, he deserved this, and he got uh, first at bat tonight, and then his second at bat, <laughs> he, he got the tough duty of facing Roldis Chapman, who was absolutely dotting all his pitches right now. So that's uh, unfortunate when he's throwing 101 uh, at the you know corner. There's not much you, anybody can do. So, But uh, I don't know. You know, Perez, he actually – he fouled off two pitches from Chapman before that, like a hundred mile an hour fastball and like a ninety mile an hour slider or whatever. So, I don't know. I, we'll see how much he plays while he's up here. I don't. We still don't really have word on how long Abanez figures to be out, but hamstrings can kind of be an issue. We, you know, uh, you know, Kevin McGonigal had the hamstring issue. We don't know when it started, but you know, he wasn't there for the spring breakout, and he's still on the IL for for Lakeland. So, could be a month, could be more. I don't know. Yeah, those things tend to linger, linger a little bit too. So it depends on. Also, you're in the time of year where it's still relatively cold. Although today in Michigan it was a gorgeous 72 degrees, it was beautiful eclipse and all that jazz. It was still a very very nice day out in the Motor City. Depends where you're at. And Torkelson strikes out. Mm -hmm. Strike him out, throw him out. Or did they actually throw him out, or did they? No, they he struck out. They catch dropped the ball, and then they threw the first. Gotcha. So. Yeah. No. Two gone in the ninth, and it's two gone now in the ninth. It's, it's up to it's Mark Canna. Canna. It's tough when, you know, Parker Meadows has been walking, but he's hitting 80, and his OPS is under 500, and Torkelson's OPS is under 600, and Kerry Carpenter's OPS is right around 600. It's just, you know, none of the guys you're counting on have really showed up. Riley Green is, is hitting under 200 despite, you know, doing some damage lately. He may be up to 200 now after that double, I don't know. Um, and Colt Keith has two hits today, so I think he's hitting above 300, but still, still waiting for that first home run. So I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, up at the big league level, we're relying on the young guys, and the young guys are, are finding it right now. And game over. Okay. Pirates win 7 4. Three straight losses for the Tigers. Still above 500. Um, still above 500. Yeah. You know who's not above 500? Who's that? Marlon? Toledo Mudhens? Oh, the Toledo Mons are not, yeah. Oh, nice segue. Yeah, here, here I am, usually the segue king here, and I totally dropped the ball. And that's my fault, dude. All mm -hmm. right. So, yeah, the Toledo Mudhens this weekend were in Iowa. It was a very cold, blistery series. The wind was howling the whole series, according to the Uper. And they lost, they only they went this series two and four against the I Cubs. And Really, it was just as far as offensive numbers go. I mean, it sort of sits six runs on. I mean, six runs yesterday, but it was it was a mixture of a lot of things, Chris. It was the rotation, a little bit of the bullpen, but it was just again the the Cubs have some pretty good prospects on that on that team too. They have, I think, three or four top three prospects. Yeah, well, I mean, they have Pete Crow Armstrong there. They have Owen Casey. They have uh, I'm, I'm forgetting the name of the uh, the kid they got from San Francisco a while back, but but he's another outfielder. They have really good uh, some some strong pitching down there too. So it, it, I mean, they're they're a talented team, and uh, yeah, and, and like you said, it was you know, there were a couple games where the Mudhens had the lead and the bullpen just kind of fell apart, uh, and it was not just one person you know brendan white really struggled uh anderson really struggled vasquez had some troubles uh brisky had one rough outing and, and then one solid outing i think it uh so yeah it uh it's early in the season but uh one of the things we kind of thought was going to be a strength uh doesn't look like it right now um they got some decent starts brant herder had a, a pretty good start uh, four innings. That's what they're holding all their prospects to right now. Four innings or less and 60 to 70 pitches. But he got uh, 13 swings and misses and a lot of them actually with the changeup, which is a pitch that he's really working on. And so that was good to see. So, you know, you can take a little out of that. But it's, it's, um, we talked about this in the show yesterday. A lot of what we're seeing with the Tigers right now, we're also seeing with the minor league teams. Like uh, Justice Bigby struck out eight times last week. And he's he's not a huge strikeout guy, but he's he's swinging and missing at basically every breaking ball he sees right now, which is not like him. So it's just that part. And then Eddie's Leonard, twelve strikeouts last week, five for twenty five with two walks and twelve strikeouts before before he got hurt. Uh, he's another guy that doesn't strike out like that. He's he's a contact guy, 
so yeah, just just everybody's still trying to find their swings this part in the season. Yeah, and you can blame the bats. Always, you can always say that the, the bats take some time to catch up and what have you. But yeah, there's a lot of quick at bats. I mean, a lot of three strike, one two three, you're out kind of at bats. And you, I mean, you can take some solace in yesterday like, in terms of just. If there's one takeaway from yesterday. I know that JC Young had a pretty ga- pretty good game, and overall, a series wise, Chris. He, I mean, he recovered pretty nicely the last couple of days. Of, so he went three for four yesterday with a pair of RBIs and a walk, and he showed him. There was a. I think it was a. I think I think you put it on the on a Twitter account. He made a really nice play at third. Uh, yeah, I don't know if. Uh... I think he had a couple opportunities to do that during the week and, and did make some some nice plays. You know, they weren't like the like gold glove plays or whatever, but, you know, we're, we're setting the bar kind of low to see what he can do at third base. And he's he seems to be making all the routine and sort of challenging plays, you know, where you have to run in and grab the ball and throw on the run. He seems to be able to do all that. So that's a good sign. I, I still don't know if it's, you know, how well it's going to work, but uh he looks the part there, and yeah, he did. He had a home run to the opposite field, and then he also hit a a, a big double off the wall in the opposite field the other day. The one, the one bummer though is he was having a great game, right? And they were down by th- three runs, and he came up with the bases loaded, and it was a three pitch strikeout. It was it was like ah, you know, you're you're counting on him to kind of get that big knock, and it just uh, you know again, you know, you can't can't get a hit every time, but yeah, he had a solid week, and and Malloy was okay. Um, but beyond that, you know, you're you're talking. About Buddy Kennedy had a good week, and Bly Madras had a good week, and. Uh, that was basically your offense. Yeah, I mean, Christian, uh, Christian, you're a bad two sixty three for the week, and then you got that Dingler. You're always, I'm sorry, it's like this. We talk about this every other week. It seemed like on the podcast last year, Dingler good, Dingler bad, Dingler good. This week, yeah, oh one, 91. For, 11. one, yeah, for, one 11 for eleven with uh, yeah. three walks and four strikeouts. I mean, the, the walks are nice. Um, yeah, it just it was nobody really. Nobody really stepped up that much. I mean, we mentioned Perez. He was four for 22, but he had a double. And uh, in that home run, as we talked about, two steals. But, yeah, it was it was just kind of, uh, again, like they're, they're just kind of resembling the Tigers. It's a little bit uh, still trying to find their footing. You know, Akil Badu looks kind of rough down there. Uh, he, he is walking a little bit, but he still, his swing just doesn't, it hasn't looked right basically since he came up to the Tigers that first year. So, and he really, you know, as Yoop said about the wind swirling out there, you could tell in in the one game, Badu was playing center field, and there were a couple times where he he basically ran back to the warning track and then had to come in like 30 feet after getting to the warning track because of the way the winds were swirling in the ball. And it wasn't just him. The, the, the Cubs center fielder was struggling like that too. So, yeah, it's probably tough to be playing this early in the year in Iowa. You know, we had a good week too. Let's get to the pitching side of things because there was a couple standouts. Mason Engler, four innings of work, one hit, seven strikeouts. Really, it seemed like he's he's been dialed in as of late. Just period. Even another encouraging start from Kyle Montero, although he, he did have three walks, so four hit, four innings, one hit, and four strikeouts cast for much more than that. And as far as that, oh, and the Devin Sweet, who I believe he started, yeah, they had a bullpen start. Yeah, wasn't too bad either. And he's he's wrapped he's hit, so far on the season, he's uh, been ex- done. Ugh, excuse me, this guy was a Triple A veteran, ten strikeouts, and he hasn't walked anybody in six innings of work so far. Yeah, he was he was uh, he basically started the game that Manning was supposed to start, but Manning had to come up for the the doubleheader on Thursday, and uh, yeah, he uh, he went out there and looked okay. I, I think uh, who was it? You said that that I think Pete Crow Armstrong got the home run off him, but other than that, yeah, he, he striking guys out. And like you mentioned, yeah, Englert, really good week. Um, but uh, one of the interesting things so far is is we've seen Wilmer Flores pitch a couple of times now, and he's got five walks to three strikeouts last week, and the velocity is back down to 94, 96. Uh, and now, now that might just be, again, because it's cold, but it's something to keep an eye on, right? Because that was, you know, velocity, that's, that's basically where the velocity was two years ago. And then last year it was down below that. And then in the spring it was way up. So I don't know. We got to keep an eye on that. Fortunately, we do have all the StatCast uh, Hawkeye data from AAA. So we'll, we'll be able to let you guys know if uh, where he settles in with that fastball. But uh, yeah, kind of rough so far. That has been 
you know, Jerry's already given us a couple of interesting stat statoids or factoids from the Hawkeye data. I think he put it on our DMs. I'm pretty sure I saw something about it earlier with the amount of uh, – maybe it was a hitter base. But beyond that, yeah, the rest of the pitching staff down in Toledo for the week, yeah. I – yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and the one that we discussed this a little bit. The one one guy I'm really kind of worried about right now is Brendan White. Uh, last week, an inning and a third, one hit, four earned runs because six walks in one hit batter, zero strikeouts. So when I mean, we know that he he had a tender elbow heading into the season, right? He was out a little bit in spring, and I, I am a little bit concerned there that maybe something's still bothering him, or maybe he's you know he's aching a little bit, so it's altered his mechanics, but. Uh, I mean, that's a guy that that you know I thought the Tigers were going to count on at some point this year to get some outs in the big leagues, and uh, that's certainly not you don't want to see a guy who goes six walks and zero strikeouts. That's uh, it's like Alec Manoa uh, the other day Oof. in Lakeland. Yeah, we'll get to that because that was that was rough. There was a lot of Blue Jay fans that were commenting on that. By the way, if you are watching us on YouTube, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to us, and if you feel like having if you feel like asking a question, you want to do a super chat. There's a super chat feature there. And also you can donate to our PayPal and the donations scrolling across right now. And we, yeah, we get it. What's, the, what's the deal? We got 15,000 Twitter uh, subscribers or followers, but only 1600 YouTube followers. Yeah. <laughs> where I mean, where is everybody? Yeah. Where is everybody? Yeah, exactly. It's not like we're blowing you up with notifications every day. We will put the videos up. Take a minute mm-hmm. and subscribe. It goes a long way. And after that, you do whatever you want after that. You can watch your, oh, whatever people watch on YouTube. Well, I depends on your streamers. There's a lot of people that watch, like, everything from nail polish videos, apparently. There's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. Uh, mm-hmm. Speed gaming. A lot of, like, that's a, I know runs. people watch that. But, yeah. let's get back Unboxing. into, what would what, you say? <laughs> Unboxing. Oh, bah. yeah, I did a, I did a mock. Unboxing yeah, right, of, every- yeah. <laughs> oh my sleep uh, machine because because yeah. I'm getting old and anyway. All right. So let's move on to Erie. And the, the Sea Wolves, by the way, their home opener tomorrow. I'll be out there for that. As they look defending Eastern League champs. So a nice ring to it. They are opening, they open the season this weekend against Harrisburg. And Harrisburg's got some really Harrisburg's got some prospects in their system, but they came away two and one after the weekend, and they'll have Jackson Job starting tomorrow. Or I'm sorry, Troy Melton. Uh, right? Troy Melton. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Mel- J- Job went on Sunday. We'll talk about that shortly. And they got a really good start from Lyle Locker, which I have some of the, the video from that start. And he started opening day and did a very good job of uh, debuting his. He was talking about throwing a sinker. Was able to hit both sides of the plate very effectively. End up and the O2 swing. Yeah, really, really nice. Uh, you know, mixing the fastball and then and then the slider and then the kind of the slower curve. But this fastball, you can tell, is just hopping on guys. They were yeah. And then yeah, there's the slower right curve, and then he break in a little. I don't know if it's a, like a cutter or slider or what what he has, but uh, yeah, like slider with this kind of sweep action. There's a kind of high curve. Yeah. Got away with there. Oh, that's a nice. That picture, looks like too. a change up or a sinker right there, but yeah. Probably change up, uh, or this. I guess it's he. He was working on a split change, wasn't he? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I mean, this is you can see why he got the opening day start, right? Was it nine strikeouts in nine four and a third, too. and sixteen swings and misses, fourteen something like that? Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a reason he put up a two and a half ERA or whatever last year in Double A, and and so, and and we just popped him into the top thirty on our list after. Uh, I don't remember what happened if somebody else dropped out, but had, oh, after after Lipsius left, right? Yep, correct. Um, and you you wrote a scouting report on that, so people should go check it out. Um, but yeah, definitely a nice start. They and, and the the Seawolves took that one home with uh, one, that was one, uh, the breaking ball line deep out to left field. Pinkney going back on it. That was the, the the no the first game that was uh, Chris Chris Myers right the two run homer. I think that was it. Yeah, that was it pretty yeah. much. And, and what, he's off to he's off to a really good start. He's actually leading the the system in hit, batting average right now. And and what you saw right there was how you leave first double A home run, uh, right? And and uh, we talked about it on the other show the, the other day too. But it uh, I I kind of projected Three how you lead back to high A, and so to see him up in double A and performing is nice. 
Yeah, this is Chris Myers. It's the offense from Friday. Yeah, two run blast from Chris Myers. He's off. Yeah, as you said, off to a really good start. What's he hitting here? Let's see. Uh, yeah, hit 364 with a 1235 OPS. He's he went four for 11 with two doubles, a homer, and a walk, and a steal. Randy, yeah, he had a steal too. Yeah, that's right. We'll get we'll Randy. Oh. There's gonna be plenty about uh Jose Bresenio shortly, my friend. Yes. We're, we're, yes. There might be a there will be a, a tire probably dedicated 15 minutes. Well, not that long, but a lot of it. We'll, we'll be talking about Jose Bresenio's week because he had a probably one of the better weeks in the system. But yeah, and then. Saturday's game against Harrisburg, they went eight to two. The offense came out and did a pretty good job. Did a really good job because this is where, admittedly, the offense coming into the season for the Sea Wolves, you're kind of wondering where it was going to come from. But you not worry. Like I said, the it just showed you the lead home run. But it was Ty Madden, mm -hmm. four perfect innings, struck out five. It looked really sharp. His curveball looked really good. He was able to spot his fastball very well. And I, I honestly went out there against a very over. I mean, Dylan Cruz made him look silly. Yeah. Um, although, I mean, I mean, he didn't strike out, but he just didn't have no chance against his pitches at all. Yeah, and we we'll show, we should mention this right now while we're talking about this. Yeah, that was Dylan Cruz first. Dylan Cruz, of course, second pick in the draft right after Paul Skeens uh, went ahead of one pick ahead of Max Clark. Dylan Cruz went one for twelve this week, I think, with seven strikeouts. Uh, I think in that first so game. He was so over four. Too, I, believe. Believe he I thought he got a hit. hit. I thought he got a hit in the first third game. Strike, yeah. But yeah, Dylan Cruz and... against in that first game, I think he went over four with four strikeouts and swung and missed seven times on 13 pitches, something like that. So that's just think, keep that in mind when we're down in Lakeland talking about Max Clark. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure that that's, that's, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, I, I know. Trust me. There's a, uh, I I got a little carried away was sticking up for Clark this weekend, right. but it was just also because it was just a lot of um, trolling, a lot of trolling. That, that was funny. We got a I don't know if you saw that from Sean. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, that's funny. The uh, yeah. So I time and I yeah I do I'm glad you brought that up because I felt like he got. At least in my head, he got a little bit lost in the weekend, right? Lockhart had that huge start, and then Joe was the next day, and then Madden, Madden goes out there and it's awesome for four innings. And, and really, that's that's a, like he was like fifty-two pitches through four innings, right? Right. And uh, but that's again, they're they're just holding their starters to that right now. And honestly, given the relative lack of Sorry. pitcher injuries they've had over the last Cold two years or, or so, the two -two. I would uh, I would say that the way the Tigers are doing it is good for, for me right now, right? <laughs> like, yeah, really, you're looking at Tyler Madison is basically the only uh, kind of prospect uh, elbow injury. Now, there are a bunch of guys in the lower minors, but uh, none of them were in, you know, on our top 30. So that's a pretty nasty pitch right there from Ty Madden. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, the thing with Ty Madden we need to see is the consistency, right? Because we've, we've, I feel like we've gone through this each of the last two years where his first start of the year is, is dominating. We're like, oh boy, look at this. And then the next start... It's just kind of middling. So I want to see him come back and do this multiple times and, and earn, you know, force his way up to Toledo. I think that's something I'd like to see. Especially, too, that his next opponent is Binghamton. So Binghamton's pretty prospect-heavy uh, prospect as well. So if he can do well against a team like that, the, the Roma Ponies, uh, that, should, that should help him in terms of confidence. And that was a team he dominated against in the postseason, too, last year. So, but they have made some personnel changes. And then Jackson Joe pitched yesterday, two and one thirds innings. He allowed three. He allowed uh, three hits, no earned runs, but allowed three runs. Three run. Three. three why am I not yeah. talk tonight? Christ. I think I'm it sorry. was a, a Navigato error at shortstop. I think. Yep. Um. Yeah, you know, he just he he wasn't uh, he wasn't particularly crisp, right? And uh, as we, we joked about it, I mean, those three walks, that's halfway to his entire total from last year. Yeah. Um, and I think certainly that may have been basically the first time he pitched in the cold, like ever in pro ball. Now, when we think about it, because he was down in Lakeland. Yeah. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. He was down in Lakeland for most of uh, 22, right? And he came up to West Michigan late in the year. And there may be one of those late season games was a little bit chilly. Uh, but then he was down in Lakeland last year rehabbing his injury and came up to West Michigan in the middle of the season and then one start up in Erie late in the year. So I, I 
pretty safe to say that's the coldest uh, professional start he's ever had. And, and you just wonder if if that affected him. At least you, you hope so, because you're kind of counting on him to not be that wild. But uh, yeah, again, like you said, he, he didn't get charged with an ear and run, so that'll look good on the line. Yeah, that will look good on the line. And we'll also look good on the line, too, is that it's just shows he's human. But also, yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah, just maybe one of those pump the brakes a little bit. Yeah. I mean, the first the first inning or so, he looked fantastic. And yeah, it's just against against a team. Like You're going to see this is going to happen. It's not going to he's not going to go through mo through everybody. And so I, I, I personally think that it's one of those things where it's good to see him face some adversity. I mean, you're going to, you, you're going to have to face some adversity. I mean, last year, his first start against Richmond in the middle of September, it was like he, nothing. And even bad him an eye, but mm-hmm. he's going to face like the best of the best here early on in the season. Yeah. And, and honestly, you do want to, uh, you want to see a guy struggle a little bit and overcome it. Um, you just hope that it, you know, that doesn't affect him in any way. And, and yeah, I'm sure that he'll, uh, Depending on the weather, of course, I think he'll be stronger in his home opener, which uh, would be what Saturday, maybe Saturday. I think. Yes, it would be Saturday. I believe. Yeah, you got, you'll have Melton tomorrow, and then probably Wilkell on Wednesday. Wilkell yeah, looks he solid. Out of the bullpen he, he, Friday or Saturday? Was it Saturday? He pitched out of the bullpen. Saturday, maybe he threw one inning and looked pretty good, and then and then it'd be back to Lockhart and then Madden and Job. So, um, yeah. I don't know, and, and uh, you know Andrew Magno threw a one very nice inning to close out the win in, in the first game, and you know it's only been three games, so you don't really have much to say. Again, the offense was mostly Myers, and then how you leave, but uh, you know got him a couple wins, right? So that works. Yeah, they had a they had a pretty a pretty good weekend overall. They, they got what they wanted. They got some win. They won the series, and felt more you can ask for. And yeah, it's going to be. They had today the over in Erie. They had the eclipse event. Everything was people were wearing those glasses, and the team was out there like that. So it was. I was gonna go in today, but then hotel prices were jacked up from like double or triple what they normally pay. So yeah, I mean Erie was smack in the middle of the the path of totality or whatever they call it, right? Like that yeah. that was that was one of the places that was getting the full eclipse. And we Body went out t- today, and, and and it was pretty close, but uh, it wasn't full. Totally, so Bonnie Taylor style for anybody that gets that reference. Total uh, clips of the heart. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that's a bad reference, but no, it was. It, yeah, it was out here. It was. It just looked like it got really cloudy all of a sudden. Sarah, my wife says, "Hey, go outside." I go check it out for a second. I'm like, I saw the eclipse in seventh grade, or I think I forgot what it was. It's all in high school. No, it was mm-hmm. it. No, I, I think seventh high? grade would have. I had one. I remember when eighth grade, and I'm I was a grade above you, I think. So yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Okay, so and then I remember one. Um, Twenty seventeen. So one before that too. Oh, Twenty seventeen. Oh, was another one. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've seen one before. Well, I mean, technically, if you've seen one, then it's not. <laughs> I don't know. It just wasn't like okay. Yeah. I mean, literally, yeah, I, was no, I, I was in here cutting up uh, Perez stuff, and then I was doing my day job, so I was just way too preoccupied. Get too it's much still kind of neat. It is neat. Don't get me wrong. It is, it is pretty cool, but you know, obligations and stuff. There's no know. Haley's Comet, which no. uh, I remember as a years. kid, but say, yeah, 76 years, I think. And I think it came in what, 1986, 87? I remember there was a I remember commercials for it as a kid. Hmm. Like they were doing, like, just make a big deal about it. Like, like yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Supposedly that that Mark Twain was born the year Haley's Comet came, and he wanted to live until it came again, and he did, and then he died. That's the story. So there you yeah. go. Simple Your Mark simple Twain facts. Twain facts. Mark, Mark Twain. <laughs> Only on this podcast we get 1987. Thank you, Sean. 87. You'll get, yeah. you'll get some. You'll get some Mark Twain facts here. Where else are you gonna get that from? Okay, so <laughs> let's move on to West Michigan and the Whitecaps this weekend off in Lane. Lake, Lake County? County, yeah. Again, I'm my apologies, folks. I think it's just been I've been on the phone all day working. I've been talking too much today, so I apologize. Um, shout out to Genesee County, out Morris Township. There, nice. Um, so oh, you live out there at that time? Okay, gotcha. Sean on YouTube here. The Whitecaps went one and two against 
against Lake County, and they had a really good start from a guy that I think people are going to start knowing his name a little more. And we've been ta- I've been talking about this guy for a while now. Uh, well, actually, all of us had. Let's just be fair. And recently, he was on Jeff Ponce's list on Baseball America as one Jaden Ham. And this is his second inning of work here. And I was talking to somebody, and they're like, "Well, so the, the shadows in Wake County were uh, oh, it might have played a factor in that." And then I, I was talking to Jeff Ponce about this this evening. He goes, you know, he was clowning people in the backfields in broad daylight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it it's it's um, you could tell it, it it's a basically over the top arm angle, a very high three quarter arm angle. Yeah. And a lot of carry on the fastball and a good breaking ball and a good changeup. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he, it kind of, you know, he jumped on the radar last year, right, because he w- didn't give up any runs in his pro debut and was striking guys out and not walking anybody, I think. And, uh, yeah, and as you said, Jeff saw him on the backfields, uh, you know, minor league spring training, and he was looking really good. And uh, it continued, continued into his pro debut up here in the cold. So, uh, nice to see. He's a guy that that will probably find his way onto our top thirty pretty soon on our next update. I would think. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. You based on this stuff, really? I mean, it, it's it's not all that dissimilar from a guy like Tyler Madison, uh, but in a starters package, which is uh, very enticing, as it were. And one of the things that Jeff did say though is like you want you would hope that you see some more velocity from him a little bit. That's his big like long term concern. But if he gets a little more velocity, I mean, watch out. Man. Yeah, because he's what? Like he's 91, 93, 92, 94, touching yeah. 95. Uh, yeah. Now, um, one thing we do know about, uh, you know, pitchers is they can uh, squeeze out more velocity uh, at times. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, you don't want to don't want to count on that. And you don't want to rule it out yet either, right? I mean, Bo Brisky was not throwing 97, 98 when we saw him in West Michigan. Yeah. And, and he's it, still it, starting then, but yeah, I mean, even then, it's one of those things where you you really have to worry more concerned about the command and calling a good or commanding and in control and command and control really, mm-hmm. and getting the batters out as effectively as possible. I mean, it's just, I know I'm stating the obvious here, but you want to, as you're doing that, what's developing? What is what what is getting better? Is your curveball getting better? Is your slider getting better? Are you making adjustments to the next level? Those are the things that. Are concerning and, and what well, you should be concerned with, but like, see, like right there, that was a, a sick pitch right there. Him to just come in there and just right there, just so much. I don't. Uh, that looked like a change up there. Change that was up, a nice yeah. Pitch. yeah, it's uh, it's it's a nice three pitch mix at least, right? I, I don't know if he has a curve and a slider. I guess we'll have to dig into the data a little bit more. But yeah, I mean, he's a guy that I can't I can't make it to West Michigan's opener tomorrow. I was count, ho- hoping to, but uh, my babysitter is in Italy. And my wife has a budget meeting and my son has soccer and I just couldn't figure out how to make it work. I, I didn't know about the budget meeting until last night. Um, but uh, but hopefully I can get out there later this week and, and maybe catch ham start, which would I think again be either Saturday or Sunday because he pitched Friday's game was was postponed due to inclement weather. Right. So he, he pitched the right. second game on was it the second Saturday. game on Saturday? Yeah. The second game on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Garrett Burhan pitched really well in the first game. Uh, and then, and they won that one, I believe was it two nothing. And yeah. That then, was the only game they won at the weekend. Yeah. And then ham pitched really well in the second game, but then the bullpen, I think gave it up later and they lost three to one. Sound right. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. And again, we're talking about, you You notice those scores are pretty low. Uh, the offense wasn't necessarily doing a ton. You got a Luke, Luke gold home run, which was nice to see. He's another guy that we're kind of thinking about. And you mentioned this yesterday, something I didn't even notice. He's been playing first base. <laughs> Which we wondered how they're going to figure out the infield configuration in West Michigan, and I, and I guess one of those solutions is eh, just a gold at first base. So that obviously puts the onus on his bat. Uh, but so far, so good. He's got the first home run. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that's a long term solution there or what. There is, I think that even I mean, because if, if you look at who's playing second base, Max Anderson, who's off to a really good start, hitting the ball pretty well. Because, yeah, yeah I thought that based off his size, I thought Anderson might get some time at first. And I think he played a little he bit did. in Nebraska, didn't he? Yep. He okay. did play first base at Nebraska. So, yeah, I mean, that that's – but that's one of those ones where, you know, he's the second-round pick last year, their third overall pick in the draft, right? And uh, he probably has more priority than Luke Gold, who was a, a fifth-rounder, fourth-rounder, 
two, three years ago. Yeah. So they want maybe maybe that, or maybe they'll play them both there. I don't know. We'll see. It's early. There's Max There's Anderson. Two zero know, is whipped in a shallow. What's that, Chris? I I get a bit of a Lipsius vibe from Max Anderson. Yeah, um, I don't know if it's, it's kind of the, the 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 stance and right there, you know, that was just an opposite field swing, right? Like just hit hit a hard line drive to the opposite field, take the hit, which is something we saw from Lipsius way back in the day when we saw him out in West Michigan, 2019. Um, yeah, you know, it's a 2019 vibe today. I mean, we had Winsteel Perez, so we saw a lot in 2019, and he yeah. used to be more of a slap, a slap and run hitter. I mean, just now he's completely evolved into something else, and. But there was something, you know, yesterday, there was two things that were kind of eye-popping a little bit. One, Dylan Smith went out there and did what he was supposed to do against high pitching. And by the way, the Midwest League, during this time of year, offense is just at a premium mm -hmm. because it's such a, between the weather and just some of those ballparks, it's hard to get anything going. But Dylan Smith, three, one, third, or three, just, or three and one, uh, three, three and a third innings, yep. Three and third innings, thank you. I don't know why I can't say this tonight. Two hits, one run, two walks, and six strikeouts. And Carlos Pena out of the bullpen. He did blow the save, but still he seven strikeouts and same amount of innings of work. And Zach Hass. Zach Hass. I cannot Zach Hass rather. Yeah. I can't believe he's still in the system. I just Yeah, you know. well, it's been, you know, he was he was part of that 2018 draft class. Or was he 2019 as well? Was he 2019? I think he was 2019. Was it 2019? Okay. I think they only took two two pitchers in the top uh, 10 of the 2019, and it was Hess and Bergner, I believe. I may be mistaken there, but uh, yeah, I mean, he, he, remember we saw him throwing kind of looking kind of electric, actually, in the, uh, whatever they called it during the COVID year when they had the, you know, the games there, the inner squad games at Comerica. And we got some Zach, Zach Hess, and, and, uh, but he's been injured and injured and injured. And I saw him a little bit last year on the, backfield cameras in the complex league and he was struggling to throw strikes but you know he's still sticking with it and so good good for him we did speaking of coming back from injury tanner colehep made his high a debut with uh the white caps and looked awesome three strikeouts on on like 14 pitches really nasty 95 96 mile an hour fastball good slider uh and he's he's a guy who could move quickly if he throws strikes because the pure stuff is really good so that was nice to see to him see him throwing strikes the biggest thing too for Smith, I think this year is to get obviously to stay healthy too. Mm -hmm. But I love to see him kind of establish himself. He's either I, I I think he can do either or. I think he could be a reliever or a starter. I like to see how the Tigers use him this year going forward. Yeah, and and well, it's kind of a a bigger anyway because he was part of that twenty twenty one draft class that that will be. It has to be added to the 40 man college players after this season. So, Ty Madden, Dylan Smith, guys like that need to be added to the 40 man or, you know, put up for potential drafting from other teams. So, yeah, I, I you know I kind of we projected them to Erie a little bit, but again, that's um, if you're getting innings anywhere, that's important. So, it's nice to see him do that. And, and if he can continue pitching like this, he'll probably get bumped up before too long. The, the one thing I guess we should touch on this we've, we've speculated a little bit i don't think we've heard any confirmation yet uh, at least i haven't is with perez going up to detroit somebody they're going to backfill that throughout the system and, and we we figured right that it was probably Corey joyce going from erie to toledo but it, it could be navigato it could be workman who knows and then probably sir danny Soretti going from west michigan to erie that's just our guess right now we'll see what happens I, we may find out tomorrow yeah there should be Probably announced probably early on because with the West Michigan's also having their home opener, as I mentioned earlier, Lakeland's also having their home opener. So I'm sure there will be activity on pretty quickly on what roster is going to be and what have you. And so, but yeah, there's the, the biggest concern. You know, the one thing about the infield in West Michigan, too, you, you, you've seen you know, Peyton Graham, who is going to be your short, everyday shortstop, is off to a slow start. Expected is also. You, a lot of eyes are going to be on Isaac Pacheco. I mean, this is a year. I don't. I'm not going to say it's a make or break year, nothing like that. But you're going to hope to see some again better at bats in in this year. And you started 
figuring out like, last year. It was you know what the stat was. I just realized Jerry was talking about was Christian Santana's stat. Oh yes, yes, the sweet spot stat. Sweet, sweet spot um, stat, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, Graham one for eight with a pair of walks and three strikeouts. The one hit was a nice sharp line drive, but yeah, you know, he's another guy that that it's it's tough to know what to expect there because he's missed so much time in pro ball already, and uh, you hope that he can pick it up. And but yeah, with Pacheco one for six with uh, a walk and four strikeouts, I agree with you. It's not, I would never call it a make or break year, but it's a year where you want to see some progress. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean the end for him as a prospect if he stays in West Michigan all year and he even has to go back again next year. That's kind of the the Parker Meadows, Winslow Perez uh, you know, playbook, right? They they both started back at West Michigan maybe when they shouldn't have and, and quickly hit their way out of there when they proved they were too good. So but you hope that Pacheco can do that this year. But you know, as you said, you know, office is a premium at this time of year. West Midwest League is is a terrible place to hit uh in April and even into May. So I don't want to uh, judge too of, much yet. Speaking of not terrible hitting, though. Timeless. The right arm hang now sets. All right, we're heading down to Lakeland. Goes from first, and the pitch is lined into Christian Feliz's mid at first. What a play from Feliz, who dropped to his knees to snare it and save more damage in the top of the second inning. Yeah, a little bit of Jose Brasigo. I thought I had a little more than that. I thought I might have done a little more than that, but maybe didn't. Either way. Jose Brasenio. Let's talk about Jose Brasenio, Chris, because he he had, a good, he had a good weekend, and he continues to be. There was a there was an article on baseball on Baseball America about him. The word is getting out, as we mentioned earlier. There's a good question here about his term or his is going to be the, the catcher of the future, and is he the Ethan Salas type of prospect? And I was talking actually, I was talking to Jeff earlier. I was he asked me what I thought about his bat. And I said I thought it looked a little faster through his own comparatively speaking last year because he's maybe because he's thinned out a little bit. And one of the things he was telling me that he was talking to some of the um sorry, I was throwing off there. Uh I was looking for something else here. <laughs> it, it was it, 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 the bat looks better. It's more strength and leverage to bat speed. It's not swinging and missing either. It's just someone Scott's mentioned is the bat speed concern to him. So if it's if it's more of a bigger guy going slower, getting getting the same torque, that's what Jeff was saying about that. I thought that was a good that was a good point. Yeah, I mean, so I get it, and that's that's been a uh, a concern with hitters for forever, right? That the uh, oh, you know, it's it's not a bat speed power; it's uh, just brute strength power, and that I could see that possibly being the case, but uh, you really can't tell that until you're facing premium premium velocity on a regular right. basis, ninety five plus or whatever. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, he's I, – I was just super impressed. I, the, the main thing, and I mentioned this on the show the other day, is I think his approach is too advanced for low A right now. If if he stays at low A for two – he's going to end up with, like, 40 walks and 10 strikeouts. I think he's 4-1 to one right now. And I, I, we uh, uploaded every one of his plate appearances from this weekend. Same with Max Clark. And um, I don't know if we want to watch him or other people can go watch him on their own, but – you see it like there's there's a couple plate appearances where he just he'll get down 0-2 and just just fall off everything until they walk him, and right. uh, and and then you know he he hit three balls more than 105 miles an hour I think you know only one was a hit but yeah when he makes contact he hits the ball really hard so yeah I mean the thing is he only caught. In one of those games, he was the DH in one and first baseman in one. And I thought he looked okay behind the plate. There was, uh, you know, one clip where the ball got away from him and then he picked it up and fell down. <laughs> that I, I didn't tweet out because it was unfair, but I put it in the Discord just because it's kind of funny. Um, and I think they're going to continue to have him play back there. But honestly, I mean, I think he looks like a pretty solid defensive first baseman. And I think the bat should play there, at least early on. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't... I don't know. It, it's hard to project him as a catcher down the road, but I wouldn't give up on it by any means. But if you want to only catch him two, three times a week, that's fine, right? You want yeah, that I, in your lineup? I mean, I know that we've talked to Darko about keeping him in the lineup as a catcher. And he, he thinks his tr- long term, he is a catcher. But yeah, honestly, any way to keep him in the, he's not Ethan Salas when it comes like a once in a generation 
defensive talent, but he does have a good bat, and that's where it, it's one of those things where you're looking at his. Now he's making me think. I have to look at his more of his bat, bats. What Jeff was talking about too, about just we got them. They're on our YouTube yeah. page. Yeah. Oh yeah. Go um, to our YouTube page. That's another reason why I subscribe to Slackers. I'm just joking. Well, I'd say you could put them up right now if you really wanted to, but um, yeah. right, good. Uh, sure. Yeah. All right. Well, because that was you know the first game he he got a was a 108 mile an hour single. And the next at bat was a line drive that the first baseman caught. And then it was just a bunch of walks. <laughs> and uh, like I said, I, like there are, uh, there were a couple of really impressive arms in, in uh, on Dunedin that I, I want to mention toward the end of this, but. Oh, yeah, are I mean, you he, talking about, uh, what's that one guy with the, like six strikeouts? The uh, yeah, pitch on relief was really good. Yeah. The, the, the Sunday kid by the name of Landon Marutis. Uh, Rudis, that's what it was. Yeah, I couldn't think of his. Uh, I mean, his like, name. I don't, I don't want to get crazy, but, but uh, he wouldn't stun me at all if that kid's a top 100 prospect uh, within the next 18 months. He's 19 year old pitcher, was you know, sitting 94 with a really nice slider, a good curveball, throwing strikes. He faced 12 batters, got all 12 of them out with six strikeouts. I think it was. So yeah, here's uh, so here's Bersenio. Every every pitch he saw that we could. It's uh, I don't know if it's. Not smooth enough there, but um, yeah, uh, there we go. That looks a little smoother. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can see this is this is his second at bat where he just lines out to the first baseman. Um, and yeah, it, you know it's it, it doesn't stand out as being like particularly impressive bat speed, but he's on everything, man. Like the only times he swung and missed were on uh, a couple. He had a a slider under his hands, a really good slider from Rudis. And then uh, he faced a, a tough lefty, a guy with a really tough angle from lefty, and he got him with a sinker up. But uh, I think this is this might be one of his walks, and and one of the things I was talking about. This is an eight or nine pitch walk where he's just fouling off everything close, and then taking his walk. And you'd like to see him turn on these pitches, right? But uh, you know they're all kind of elevated, and he's not swinging and missing. The good eye there didn't, you know, breaking ball didn't drop in on him. Definitely close pitch there. Been. Yeah, so it took a walk, and then I think oh, there's this little single the opposite way, just a like nice piece of hitting, right? What well, didn't didn't crush it, but hits or hits. He barreled it up. He barreled up nicely. Yeah, got the nice got, got out there. And uh, like I said, you know, we we got you know, just a hard grounder. We got uh, three games worth of at bats. I just wanted to put him up there. I put his and Max Clark's up because uh, I figured people would want to see, and we. Honestly, it's just we haven't had a whole lot of. Uh, oh, this is this is one where he he should have popped out there and then had new life. And I think this is like a ten pitch at bat. Um, well, there's a, a, pitch, a six that's actually eight. that's not. I don't think that's Marutus, but that was a pretty damn good slider, right? That, that was. Yeah. Uh, you don't really blame him there, but. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, you look at him and he's 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 a big kid, but it's not like he's not like Dan Vogel back up there, right? Like he looks like a big, strong athlete type kid, like. Uh, Bigger than Roberto Campos, even right? Yeah. Um, but you do like we said, you know, he's nineteen. You're not. He's he's most likely not going to get smaller <laughs> as he gets older. So it's it's tough to project him at catcher. But maybe later in the year we'll do uh you know take a closer look, do a video of him behind the plate to see what he looks like. But yeah, I would mind. I would mind do that, and hopefully, yeah, he we when we see him in West Michigan when it gets a little warmer, perhaps. I know some fans would like to see him up there now. But yeah. as let's, I mean, let's not let's address the elephant in the room with Max Clark, who is off to hasn't got a, hasn't got a hit yet, and yep. all weekend got you know, we were <clears throat> I mentioned this earlier. A lot of people were ragging on him on on social media, and well, I mean, it, it what sucks is is that it doesn't matter what he does unless he co you know hits six hundred with forty home runs. People are just going to complain because the Tigers could have taken White Langford and White Langford's in the big leagues. Uh, but as we talked about earlier, Dylan Cruz, who went ahead of both of them, he's off to a really slow start and didn't hit a home run in his pro debut last year. Uh, you know, Paul Skeens looks pretty awesome, but he's not up to the big leagues yet. yet. It's it's just uh, people are going to complain uh, no matter what. And it, it's it's tough because I do have some mild concerns about Max Clark. And, and we I, we have his video, too. And you can kind of see it in the video where he just seems to be late on every fastball. 
he's, he's either hitting it uh, to the opposite field or swinging and missing at the fastballs. But there's still a lot to like there. You know, he he clearly has a very good eye. Uh, he did get called out on strikes a couple times, um, and you know he challenged a couple pitches and was right. And uh, the speed is there. He made a really nice diving catch in center field already. It's just uh, I, I worry a little bit about the bat speed right now. But again, that could just be because it's the beginning of the year and he's facing live bullets for real for the first time, or it could be something that they need to fix. But uh, it's not something to get super concerned about just yet right this is three games for for a 19 year old and and you know he was a consensus top five pick and one of the best drafts in the last decade or so so uh, unless every single scout was wrong uh, he's probably going to figure this out but but people want results right now and we saw this play out really well with the the jackson job and marcella meyer thing so just want people to chill out take a breath right <laughs> You know, not not get too concerned about Max Clark. We'll put the videos out there for people to consume, but uh, you know, don't yell at him. It's early. Please don't. It's it's no. it's it's a kid. You know. Um. No. Somebody mentioned. By the way, I'm way behind. So, so if you mentioned Diaz DFA by Houston, could he come back to Detroit? I no, we didn't mention that, and that's a possibility. I mean, right now, with the way arms have been, I mean, it. Yeah. Why not? He was yeah, fine I mean, here. I mean, at, at that point, it's up to him, right? Like he's, uh, I, I, I mean, I suppose the Tigers could claim him again, right? But um, I don't know. I, I mean, they kind of just went through that, so yeah. But we'll get back to Clark. Getting back to Clark, though, though it, it was a little ridiculous. I mean, I, I think also somebody mentioned too. It could probably have been troll, like have been robot or AI, whatever. Be that as it may, if you're also if you're creating an algorithm to troll a 19 year old prospect, then you, I <laughs> say, have to one of your life choices. Yeah, it's it's just it comes with the territory when you're a high draft pick, right? Uh, it's you know people. Jamison Williams gets all sorts of uh, guff because he hasn't produced much for the uh, for the Lions, uh, but that's just the way it goes, man. You're the high draft pick that people expect you to to be a superstar right away. But as many many people have pointed out, when White uh, White Langford was Max Clark's age, he wasn't even playing at the University of Florida, so let alone playing. Uh, you know, full season baseball in the minors. So give the kid some time. And like I said, you, you, we've seen some of the other tools. He walked a few times. He's a aggressive, good base runner, good, good defender. Just need to to see the hitting. Uh, you know, he, he had a couple deep fly outs and then rolled over on a few balls to second base. You know, big deal. Like we, we were just talking, Spencer Torkelson hasn't done much of anything in the big leagues right now. Like you know, sometimes it takes guys a little while. Oh, I know. Let's get back to the pitching for a moment because there's one pitcher that stood out to you over the weekend, Chris, and it was Hayden Milton came out and shoved pretty well for Lakeland. Yeah, Hayden Milton was their ninth round pick last year, I think, out of Missouri State. Does that sound right? Um, well, yeah, Hayden right. Randall Milton. I'm looking right now. Ninth rounder, Missouri State. Yeah, uh, yeah, he had a he, he looked impressive to me. It, it was. It's a, a little bit reliever-ish delivery to me. Like he reminds me a little bit of Garrett Burhan, uh, who was also, I believe, a ninth round pick a few years back. Uh, but the fastball, it was a sinker. It was like 93, 95. Uh, he may have even touched 96, and it had pretty good movement. And he's got a slider and a changeup, and they're both solid average. And then he flashed an above average curve, which was uh, nice to see. But yeah, threw a lot of strikes and mixed, mixed his pitch as well. And it looks like a guy who... Like I said, he, he I, I, I just the del delivery a little bit looks reliever-ish to me. It's not super effortful, but there's, uh, I don't know, it's just not like super athletic and, and smooth. But that doesn't necessarily mean if you're throwing enough strike, like like you know we've talked many times about Brent Herter's delivery doesn't look like a starter's delivery to me, but he throws strikes, <laughs> so he's a starter. So if Minton keeps doing that, I would expect him to. I expect him to to bump up to West Michigan relatively quickly too, because the stuff looks uh, looks good enough to get high A hitters out. Yeah, especially this is a year where I mean, I don't know enough to I haven't seen enough yet in in or A rather in A ball for a state lead to two see how the league fares. Pitch. But he takes a called strikes the the talent. Remember how last year we were talking about the talent levels being different than the lower previously. It might be the case this year again. But here is I, I see what you're talking about, Chris. Like that kind of that. Almost, I don't want to say head whack, but those kind of funky follow through. Yeah, it, yeah, it it's just uh, 
Yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but there's a little bit of the the way he kind of plants his leg and then lets the the follow leg whip around. But but like you said, that you know the stuff there's Beautiful there's curve. yeah one of his uh, above average curves there, and you see you see all four pitches in this. He struck out Arjun Nimala there, and the sinker was you know, 91 to 95. I think like I said, I think he touched 96. He threw a four seamer too. Um, but yeah, it it, it was uh, it was a nice. Kind of first look at him. I know he pitched a little bit last year, and that was a nasty sinker right there. And that curve again, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, he seemed to to have a pretty good feel for elevating the sinker, which is something that more guys are doing. So it was it was a nice outing for him. Just like you said, four innings. I think he gave it one run. Um, and then uh, it was nice. Sawyer Gibson Long came back, yeah. so he's on on the road to recovery. He pitched uh, the Sunday game was was Gibson Long versus Alec Manoa, and. Uh, you know, a lot of people were, were that's another one where I, I feel kind of bad because I was putting up that you know Alec Manoa walked the first four batters of the game. Uh in in a lot of pitchers weren't necessarily close, but he was also throwing 95, 96 and, and threw a couple decent sliders. It was just like his command was just completely gone. Uh, but if I were a Blue Jays fan, I would I'd be certainly concerned after what happened last year, but there's at least some hope there. The arm, the, the velocity seems to be back. But uh yeah, uh, Gibson Long looked good. He gave up a home run to to Arjun Nimala, which is you know cool for that kid, right? He was a first round pick, uh, the first ever Indian American drafted, I think, in any of the major sports, or at least certainly first round pick. So, uh, but other than that, Gibson Long didn't really have any issues. Struck out a bunch of guys, and uh, the, the one other guy I did want to mention, I don't know, there, there are a couple a couple of the college picks the Tigers made last year look kind of fun down there in, in Lakeland. John Peck, shortstop infielder um he had a rough junior season in college but he's he's uh you can tell he's athletic can play shortstop and super aggressive there's there was a a max clark ground ball to second base where peck started on second base and it was to, to the second baseman so it was drawn in the second baseman threw home to the catcher the catcher kind of dropped it and peck came all the way around from second to score really aggressive really uh heady baseball so i like that and then brett callahan homered the outfielder homered off Alec Manoa, and it's a good-looking swing. Um, you know, I don't know if he did much more this weekend, but uh, I don't know. He, he's a guy that I, I feel like could be. I think I compared him to Ben Malgeri a little bit before as is a kind of do everything outfielder, uh, but he's left-handed, which uh, helps a little bit, right? So, I don't know. He's he's a guy that I'm intrigued to watch, and then saw some some good things and some bad things from Jim Jarvis and David Smith, a um, couple of infielders they took, but. Overall, it was it was fun. It was mostly fun to just be able to watch low A games. I mean, it's not the best baseball in the yeah. world. I'll tell you that there was there was a lot of a whole <laughs> lot of walks. Uh, um, and Lakeland Blue that Sunday game, they were up seven to one, and they lost eight to seven. Yeah, that was brutal. That was yeah. And and one of the guys I've talked about a couple times, Yos Yosper Sanchez. I always called him Yosper. Uh, he came out and he he showed his velocity and his breaking ball, but he couldn't throw many strikes, and then he he gave up a a bomb, a walk-off home run. So, a little bit to work on there for Yost Bear. But, uh, yeah, same thing with Chris Williams Jr. Kind of, uh, yep. we did see the debut of uh, Donve Evans over the weekend, too. Yeah, you know, Donye Evans, uh, one of their, I think he was a 15th, 16th round draft pick last year out of uh, Coastal Carolina, something like that. No, or, uh, That's Charlotte, 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 yeah, Charlotte, Charlotte, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, a big, big kid with, uh, some pretty good stuff, uh, it, but yeah, there was just there was just a ton of guys. Uh, I think Cole Stupp, I want to say, came in and walked everybody. There's um, Zach Lee, who actually looked pretty good too. Zach yeah. Lee and exactly, uh, and then the other one, Andrew Sears, was the other. Uh, he was a lefty from UConn. Another guy with with pretty interesting stuff. His he's he's a, a his sinker was up to ninety four, ninety five, and he had a, a pretty solid slider, but he really struggled to throw strikes. And I didn't see much in the way of, of change ups from him. But uh, it's another solid arm that's added to the system last year. It's just uh, need more strikes. Yeah, it's. I'm hopefully we get to see Thomas. Uh, uh, can they sign from any ball? Bruss, he did. He pitched Bruss. yesterday, and did he, he was I, up to well, he was that. up to 97. I think maybe maybe rounded up to 98. But he also had some trouble locating, throwing strikes, and and um, and also I think the first batter or two he faced it was one of those things where it was like just unfortunate events took place behind him um but yeah it, it was uh some pretty good arms in that bullpen it's just 
not nearly enough strikes early on in the season. Yeah, it's all taking again, taking time. Yeah, we yeah, Walter, we went on we, we were we went crazy for ham. <laughs> it's gonna be a, we, a lot of ham jokes. Yeah, we uh, yeah we we took a look at and I Raj put up the video of, and you can see it on YouTube. I think you probably already have Walter, but yeah, he, he's uh, ham was one of the more encouraging stories of the the weekend for sure, and uh, Minton was kind of a low key encouraging and Brasenio very very nice, Madden very nice, uh, so yeah, you know like first. Yeah, the first the first three game series, you, we can't figure out much. It usually takes five six weeks for us to determine, you know, what the storylines of the season will be. You know, this time last year, Colt Keith wasn't off to a great start in Erie. None of us were talking about Justice Bigby. Um, Jackson Job was hurt. We didn't know if he was going to come back and be any good. You know, a um, lot of a lot of things needed to happen last year, and. and it's funny to go back and think about that, and I'm sure there'll be a bunch of fun storylines this year. And, and in a couple months, we'll be shocked by certain prospects and you know saddened by others. Yeah, yeah. You know. It's, so if you're looking to check out one of the minor league affiliates, so everybody's everybody's home this week. So Toledo is playing in Indianapolis starting on starting tomorrow. All six thirty starts with the exception of Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So. Tuesday through Thursday, we get a chance. Go check out the Mud Hens if you're local to the area. And tomorrow in Erie, they have the home opener, and they believe they they did the ring ceremony down in Lakeland already. I believe. So I think the the official rings, but I yeah. I do think they're they're doing a flag raising or a banner raising, yeah. and I think they're giving out replica rings right to fans. Yes, and I don't know how many fans. But... Allegedly, we might be getting some replica rings. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But I mean, uh, I did a, yep. we did an awful lot of work for that team. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do anything. We watched. Yeah, it's fun. We watched a lot of. Yeah, we, I mean, you know, to be fair, uh, you know, if you look at our, our, our UP, the ball bar, UPMC, should give us a check for our, the, the impressions. Well, and yeah, but we didn't really. do anything. We did nothing to the field. I mean, that one I'm time we helped roll I mean, out we did, tarp. We did, you know. Wow, look at Deadly Ninja Bees, man. Savage. He's like, I predict Manning's going to get a little by in Indianapolis. Well, right. who does Indianapolis have right now? I keep, I'm drawing a blank right. I don't know the Pirates system too well. I believe Skeens will be pitching at some point this week. So, Oh, that's a, that's a good but, call. Um, so, by the way, tomorrow the opening for the giveaway is the champion of Chipster Banner ring presentation and magnetic schedule exit giveaway. So, there you go right. for down there they for erie for west michigan for those who are on the west side of the state because we do have quite a bit of uh, west side uh people in among our listening audience their schedule this week kicks off against the quad city i always want to say quad city djs because it's just an old yeah. habit uh but yeah they play quad city same thing they except for erie on wednesday though wednesday erie has an afternoon game but you can the first two games in west day. michigan from yeah the school kids say yeah so wednesday Tuesday and Wednesday against Quad Cities, both 635 starts. And Thursday against Quad City is Dog Day. And then Friday is National Grilled Cheese Day. Hmm. All, All right. right. Delicious, so you would say. And then uh, Saturday and Sunday are 2 o'clock games. And then next week they play at Great Lakes, which I'm, I might go out. I'm due to go see a Loons game. It's a yeah. great facility. Great facility. I love that place. Yeah, love that it's always, the Dodgers always have good prospects, even if we don't know it yet. Yeah, because you will see them at some point, and it's a good place to see a game. If you get a chance to go to, if you're in the area in Mid Michigan, it's one of the better ballparks. In the, I honestly like. I'm not trying to show a lot of people's egos there, but it's a really it's a good place to see a game. As far as Lakeland goes, so they have their debut of Joe, who we had on the podcast. Pucci, and yeah. yeah, he'll be on. There. They start against Binghamton, Bradenton, Bradenton, Binghamton. Wow. Got the Rumble ponies in there. It's been a long day, folks. Yep, and they kick off their series starting tomorrow at six thirty, and then six o'clock. They have Education Day on Thursday, so, but yeah, should be some really good baseball across. And you can watch it all all minor league affiliates now, so you have no excuse. And should be a good time. And yeah. I'm trying to take a. Is there anything else, Chris? Before we get out of here? No, no. It's uh, you know, it's nice to get the season going again. I, I it's uh, 
can be a little hectic when there are four games going on at once and we're trying to get clips for everything. <laughs> and then, yeah. and also we have lives, right? So we're like, Oh, I gotta run out. Um, yeah. but, uh, you know, always welcome people to say, Hey, can you go get that clip for us? Like there was something that happened. I want to see it again. Like there was the Carlos Mendoza catch in Lake County that I, uh, I missed live, but then I heard the announcer mention it later. And then somebody mentioned to us like, Hey, can you grab that? And, uh, that was where we got the interesting uh, comment from the announcer, too. What did, what did he say? That uh, I sent you the clip of that, the, the guy that... Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that clip, that clip. So, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, no, I, I, so I'm looking forward to another week of minor league baseball. And uh, I, I have a feeling that, that Max Clark's going to have a good week at home. We'll see. But uh, I think he's going to put put something together this week. So please, if you have not donated already, there's our PayPal link there. Is you go to and there's on our Twitter page or X page, there's a GoFundMe link there and multiple ways to donate and help us out. We really appreciate it. And props to Connor, and you'll know what I'm talking about here in a second. But uh, looks like we have a couple of players lined up for our interview series, and I'm not gonna say. Oh, who, nice. Yeah. So check the DMs, Chris, when you're all set. Oh, oh all right. So, uh, oh, all right. And uh, we'll be back next week. Hopefully, Brandon will be back with us. For week three, as we recap every single Monday night starting at 9 o'clock here on the Tiger Miley YouTube channel, click the subscribe. Please do so. It goes a long way. And follow us on Twitter at Tiger Simple Report and our Facebook page. Yes, we still use Facebook. And we do have an Instagram, but, I again, there's just so many. I can't get better about posting. But uh, props out. Shout out to Connor, who's been helping us. He's been the producing behind the scenes. And props to... Zeke Jennings, who's going to be covering West Michigan tomorrow for us. So he's going oh, to be thank you, Zeke. Yeah, day. Sorry. I, yeah. I was okay, hoping man. to get out there, but uh, it's, it's yeah. nice. And oh, shout out to Colin, too. Colin, he went to a Mudhens game hmm. the last week. I forgot to give him some props for that. That was oh. really nice of him to do that. And so it, it's nice to have people that can help us out. It, it goes on, which is why those those nations, little things like that, that help pay for Colin's. Well, I don't know. Got him a polo, and then I, he's like, oh, I'm like, do you want me to pay for your subscription? And he's like, no, I got it. I'm like, yeah. anyway, uh, it all goes back to what we do and we love. And so until next week, have a good week, everybody.